changed. The NIV, which Billy Crone uses, has changed. You know, and since 1973, since the first one came out, the modern NIV, the, the newest one, the TNIV, doesn't even re resemble the uh, 1973. And it's doctrine that's been changed. We're not talking about spelling changes. We're talking about major doctrines. The NIV started out as a, oh, you know, kind of we want to appeal to all the different religions and things. You know, the international version, you know, globalist version. It started out like that, and it progressed through to now it's a feminist Bible. And it's got, it's just so polluted with satanic doctrine, it's, it's just insane. I mean, you can look, look this stuff up. I, I can prove it. I have proved it. Years and years of collation work. Then he goes on to say, Also, if one claims the original 1611 KJV is the only inspired infallible word of God, he is claiming that purgatory is true since the Apocrypha was included in, in the 1611 version and it teaches purgatory, 2 Maccabees 12.45. Well, this raises two problems. First of all, he lied. It was included between the Old Testament and the New Testament. It was put in just for reading, just as a, hey, this is interesting, it's there. It was never recognized as part of the inspired scriptures. So he lied to his people. It was not part of the inspired scriptures. It was put in between the two testaments. Okay? But now if you pick up a Roman Catholic Bible, you will see that, it yes, it these books of the Apocrypha are part of the Old Testament. They're intertwined in with the Old Testament books. But here's the interesting thing. Vaticanus and Sinaiticus both, the two oldest and best manuscripts that the NIV loves to talk about, both contain these apocryphal books as part of the inspired scriptures. So why doesn't the NIV translate them? The NIV is supposed to be from these two oldest and best manuscripts, but they won't translate what's in them. Which one is Catholic? Think about that. Again, another lie. Problem number five that uh, Billy Crone gives here. Some of the translators appear to be subject <laughs> Well, well, yeah, let's talk about the NIV translators. But it says here, Some have said that King James himself was a homosexual, and while that may be disputed, the person of Erasmus is not. It may be disputed. Hey, buddy, it's a lie. If you want the full account of King James not being a sodomite, you can get this book, King James Unjustly Accused. Total lie. King James was married, and he had eight children. He was not a homosexual, okay? Just ridiculous. And yet, this accusation against King James was originally stated by a Jesuit. And yet, you have these supposed Protestant preachers repeating Jesuit lies. Interesting. Interesting why they would, you know, continue to repeat Roman Catholic propaganda, which has been proved wrong for centuries. And yet they continue to repeat it. Hmm. And all the while, you know, not admitting to the fact that Virginia Mollencott and Martin Woodstra of the Old Testament Translation Committee, uh, they were both gay. Okay? Martin Woodstra was a sodomite, Virginia Mollencott lesbian. Both part of the NIV translation team. Okay? Documented. But anyhow, he goes on here to talk about Erasmus. Erasmus never left the Roman Catholic Church, and he also did interesting things, just to name a few, like guessing at the last six verses of the book of Revelation. Okay. They talk about Erasmus. Well, I got some news for you. It wasn't Erasmus' text that underlies the King James Version. It was Stephanus. Erasmus had nothing to do with the translation of the King James Version. He died quite a few years before this book came out. You know, 60 or more years before this book came out. Get your facts straight, man. But, oh, but Erasmus's text was the foundation of the, oh, later, what later became the Textus Receptus. Okay, show me one Bible that the Catholic Church has translated from Erasmus's text. Show me one. Can't do it. Then he goes on to say, Note, I share all this uh, not to get into a debate. Of course not, because you'd lose. Frankly, I do not have the time for it, even though I could go on and on with even more issues with the KJV. Sure you could. 
My personal observation is, is that it's quite obvious that those of the KJV only group and those who are not are not going to budge and that this debate will probably continue on until the return of Christ. Yeah, it will. You always have people that will accept and love and appreciate God's book and you always have dirty, wicked sinners who will turn against this book and use anything but it, the King James Version. Um, Therefore, I choose to spend my time working on sharing the gospel. One thing we know for sure is this. I have family and friends, and so do you, who are still on their way to hell. Actually, if you read an NIV in the Old Testament, the word hell has been completely removed. So, you're worried about people going to hell. Why are you worried that your Bible that you use and that you preach from has removed the word hell? completely from the Old Testament and many of the references in the New Testament. Why aren't you worried about that? I don't want them to go there and neither do you. Okay, This is where my primary focus lies and hopefully as a fellow Christian, surely this is something we can work and pray together for. Blah, blah, blah. That is standard operating procedure when you back an Alexandrian into the corner, and by the way, if this was supposed to be a rebuttal to my video, he didn't even come close to approaching answering what my video was about. Not even close. And if this, I mean, that's what they always do. You back them into a corner and they say, it's about salvation, it's about salvation. What about the authority of the Bible? What about uh, this book being exalted above God's name? What about that? What about the authority of Scripture? You know what's wrong with this country? What's wrong with this world? People lost their respect for the Word of God. That's what's wrong right now. You think the government would be stealing, robbing, taking money from the people of America if they feared God and if they feared and they read this book? No, they wouldn't. Do you think that there'd be all the perverts out there if they feared and respected this book? No. Do you think that abortion would be a thing if people feared and respected this book? No. Do you think there would be murder? Do you think there would be pornography? Do you think there would be alcohol? Do you think there would be drugs? It's all based on the book. The subject of final authority. Satan is the one that said, Yea, hath God said. Satan, true satanic philosophy. I'm going to do a video on this sometime. True satanic philosophy is get rid of the book. And let me just say in conclusion here, This kind of stuff, right here, these mega preachers, the guys that have the big churches, they do not want, one of, the, one of the tenets of the Protestant Reformation, which these guys fear, is the priesthood of the believer. And these guys can't stand that thought. You see, the papist, the Catholic mentality is that you have different levels of people. And the people up here you got to keep the laity down. The priest class has to keep the laity down and to give them a book that's perfect and say, this is the Word of God. This is all you need. You don't need me. You need Jesus Christ. There's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. You don't need a priest. You don't need a pope. You don't need a bishop. You don't need a false prophet like Billy Crone. Okay? You need the Holy Spirit to show you what this book means. These guys fear that. You see, because preaching to them is an income. That's what it's about. So you have the people starting to think independently. That can cut into your salary a little bit. And watch the guy. Go, go ahead, watch some of his stuff. It's like a, watching a used car salesman. That's what he puts me in mind of. I learned a long time ago as a Christian that you should always watch out for somebody that has a stage voice. If they wouldn't talk the way that they preach when they're out on the street, you know, if they're putting on some kind of a stage voice, making all kinds of radical things, watch out for them. Be careful of that. And you watch this Billy Crone, he is, he looks like he's a con artist to me. Okay? And those kinds of guys, they don't want people having a perfect book because that perfect book can judge them and that scares them. So I don't know if he's going to try to make another rebuttal or I have no idea. I wish the guy 
Uh, if he's saved, he's going to have to realize, if you are saved, if you're watching this, you're going to have to realize you're going to stand before Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ, and you're going to give an account. But by the way, let me say something else quick here before I forget, before I close down. And that is Proverbs 13.13 13 says, He that despiseth the word shall be destroyed. You better be careful what you say about this book. Be careful how you mock this book. You mock this book, I've seen things happen to people. If you are saved, God will take you down a notch or two. Don't make fun of the book. Okay, watch what you're saying. 